All right, thank you, Masaki. Uh, let me begin by thanking the organizers for giving me this opportunity to come to Singapore and give this talk. I have been coming to Singapore for many decades now. Uh, I think in last two, two decades, I may have traveled five, six times or even more. So good to be here again. Uh, uh, the topic of uh, today's lecture is uh, somehow to understand uh, how cohomological representations of real reductive group behave under um, functoriality. So that is the aim of this lecture. Uh, and uh, I think uh, much of the time I will spend on reviewing what is known for GLNR in the hope that it gives you a model for or, or, uh, any way to test anything one may want to do. And also, it will be important for my purposes. Uh, so I should uh, say that, uh, uh, yeah, so this is uh, a reductive algebraic group over R. Algebraic group over R, uh, always connected, I believe. And uh, the group G is uh, GR. Uh, and uh, one is interested in representations uh, pi of G or of GK such that this is non-zero for some i. Uh, one is always interested only in uh, where pi is uh, unitary. I believe uh, more general representations have been studied, but uh, they are of no interest for my lecture today. Uh, uh, unitary representations with uh, non-zero cohomology are uh, called uh, cohomological unitary representations, and uh, they play an important role among all representations of real groups. Uh, uh, they are among the most uh, a useful representations in the theory of automorphic form as it meets the theory of real groups. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the sometimes uh, representations for which this cohomology is non-zero is said to be with trivial coefficients. And then there is a slightly more uh, general uh, context that one studies in which uh, one has a finite dimensional representation uh, for some i and uh, some finite dimensional representation of, uh, of the algebraic group. So these are called twisted coefficients, and uh, one is interested. Uh, maybe more often in this question and uh, almost as often in twisted coefficients. Uh, so somehow, as I said, uh, the aim of the lecture is that uh, if you have a morphism of uh, a reductive uh, of the dual group and uh, you do functorial transfer from representations of G1 to representations of G2 via this, uh, what, uh, what does it do to cohomological representations? Uh, somehow, uh, the point of view which seems uh, much more uh, uh, useful and prevalent in the subject is to replace this uh, uh, mo modified veil group by putting an SL2C due to Jim Arthur and uh, uh, look at uh, corresponding A packets. And uh, question is, uh, given uh, phi here and the parameter psi, psi goes to phi composite psi. Uh, uh, parameter for G1 goes to parameter for G2. And then uh, Mm, there are these uh, A packets associated to psi, 
and uh, there is an A packet associated to P composite psi and uh, somehow the motivating question is uh, whether it has anything meaningful, meaningful to say about homological representations. So uh, indeed uh, it looks to me like uh, most basic question one could ask and therefore uh, bit surprising that this has not been considered partly because the answer is typically that it is of no interest. So I will comment on that a little later, but then the real point of my lecture is that there is a situation of interest in which uh, this is as good as it should happen. And uh, to find a situation in which uh, this seems to work uh, very perfectly and uh, in some sense, when I gave the title and abstract of my lecture one or two months ago, you know, homological representations have been uh, well studied for last 40 years, and uh, many people have given exposition on this from the point of view of parameters also. And therefore, uh, you know, it's just two page summary in many papers. I think there is the early paper of Jim Arthur from late 80s, and then uh, there is a paper by Blasius Rogowski from the Motives volume. Then uh, of the late, there is also an exposition by Tybee, which is from last year. So I thought that uh, this should be all uh, more or less obvious, but uh, it was, I mean, it, meaning that I had give, given myself uh, two months to uh, read those one or two pages, but I have not been successful and therefore indeed it is a work in progress in the sense that what I propose, I certainly hope is the case, but uh, I am not uh, proven that. So we will come to that. But uh, just to begin talking about things which, uh, uh, just to set the stage uh, and uh, also talk about things which seem more correct. Uh, let me uh, begin. Uh, so I want to begin recalling uh, the work of uh, SPE on cohomological representations for GL and R. Somehow uh, that's a very complete and a beautiful result and uh, uh, so I wish to do that. So uh, let me uh, 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 set the notation, this WR is uh, C star times this J, uh, which operates on C star by Z goes to Z bar and J square is minus one. Uh, what would be of interest to me in this lecture always uh, would be not this group WR, but somehow WR upon R plus, uh, which is uh, R, R star is sitting inside C star and uh, R plus is the connected component of identity and if you divide C star by R plus it is an S1 times J. So the whale group will also always be considered through its quotient by R plus. Uh, so uh, I think at some point I will use this notation that uh, uh, I will use a particular parameter sigma k of a two dimensional representation of the whale group which is induction from C star to W r of uh, z by z bar to the power k by 2. So where k is a uh, positive integer, uh, it could be an odd integer in which case uh, one is taking a fractional power. Uh, which is understood as saying that r e to the power i theta goes to e to the power i k theta. So here uh, z by z bar raised to power half is the character. So c star is r times e to the power i theta goes to e to the power i theta. So uh, this Sigma k is a two-dimensional irreducible representation of WR if k is not zero and uh, 
sigma k corresponds to in the classical notation discrete series d k plus 1. So, sigma 1 corresponds to the minimal discrete series d 2, the analog of the Steinberg uh, d 2 and uh, these are our representations are representations of uh, G L 2 R upon R plus. So, these are unique representations of G L 2 R upon R plus which are highest weight or lowest weight uh, K plus 1. So, this is the notation. Uh, then uh, I am ready to uh, state the uh, theorem of SPE. Uh, so, you know, uh, before I do that, maybe I should say that uh, all my uh, parameters will be uh, uh, WR cross SL2C with uh, values in uh, G, L, and C, or uh, when I would like to be more general, uh, I forgot whether it's on the left or right. Okay, it doesn't matter. So, uh, uh, we will uh, always look at parameters of this kind associated to an A parameter, there is an L parameter done in the obvious way. And uh, when one is talking about uh, GL and R, one can certainly confuse between the two, two notions. So, so the theorem of uh, space says that uh, uh, let uh, psi from uh, W R cross S L two C to uh, G L and C be an A parameter So you know A parameter has inbuilt with it certain conditions which are then uh, which then go with this notion uh, of the form psi is equal to A plus B, uh, where uh, A is a sum of uh, irreversible representations of WR cross SL2C of the form lambda tensor mu with uh, lambda dimension of lambda equals 2 and uh, B is a similar sum, sum with uh, dimension so, as I said that, uh, uh, keep in mind that representations of uh, WR are either one dimensional or two dimensional irreducible. So, an irreducible representation of the product is a tensor product of uh, uh, irreducible representation of WR and irreducible representation of WC. And I am decomposing this parameter as A plus B in which I am putting all the two dimensional irreducible representation in A and all the one dimensional irreducible piece in B. And uh, uh, the theorem of space is that uh, such an A parameter, such an A parameter is cohomological if and only if uh, one. So, this uh, B part is uh, uh, sim k of C2 for some k 
A greater than equal to zero. So SL2C has these irreducible representations. So what that means is that WR is operating trivially and SL2C is operating via this. And the second condition is that uh, infinitesimal character of pi of uh, the parameter. So uh, character of uh, psi is that of a finite dimensional representation E lambda. So uh, I will elaborate on the notion of an infinitesimal character, but uh, uh, just to say uh, IE, so maybe this is uh, underlined. So this lambda bar uh, is a highest weight, lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda greater than or equal to lambda n and uh, i e for uh, lambda equals this, uh, v equals v lambda, uh, the infinitesimal character, infinitesimal character of psi is uh, uh, lambda plus rho which is uh, uh, lambda 1 plus n minus 1 by 2 this time greater than lambda 2 plus n minus 3 by 2 dot 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 uh, strictly greater than minus. So uh, I think infinitesimal character uh, of a parameter is of course a very well-known concept, uh, but I must say that I have difficulty following the literature on this matter. So I will for the moment uh, make an ad hoc def definition of what is an infinitesimal character uh, because the parameter is A plus B and uh, these are sum of parameters and for each one I will just declare what the infinitesimal character is. So uh, I want to say a few words about infinitesimal character. Infinitesimal character. So uh, in general, of course, we want to uh, understand infinitesimal character for a parameter like this to LG. Uh, but as I said, uh, that we don't want to worry about too much, uh, and I will just. Uh, uh, content myself by defining what is a uh, parameter, uh, for such a parameter what is the notion of an infinitesimal character. So for me, an infinitesimal character, character of a parameter psi from WR cross SL2 C to GLN C uh, is a sum of uh, n characters of R plus. So in some sense the way to think about this is that uh, by a well-known theorem due to Harishchandra and maybe Castleman had some role to play on that uh, that any representation of a real group is obtained uh, as a composition factor of a representation obtained by parabolic induction from the Borel. So a character of R star to the power n is involved and these n characters are those characters of R star but restricted to R plus. So that is the information of the infinitesimal character that is being talked about and uh, I will then translate that information for, so for representations uh, sigma k tensor with uh, sim i, uh, 
declare the infinitesimal character decimal character to be uh, so it would be new to the power k by 2 plus new to the power minus k by 2 into new to the power i by 2 plus plus so uh, uh, this consists of uh, this has dimension i plus 1 so this is 2 times i plus 1 dimensional character of r plus where nu is the identi identity character of r plus z uh, x goes to x r plus so uh, that is this character is a representation of r plus of dimension equals 2 times i plus 1. And uh, when the representation is sum of these representations, then of course it is sum. And uh, if it is uh, one dimensional, then you correspondingly one dimensional anyway is a character of R star times uh, semi. So it is the obvious infinitesimal character, you put them together. So somehow uh, now one important representation which comes up in the work of SPE is uh, example is uh, uh, new to the power k by 2 plus new to the power minus k by 2 times sim k minus 1 in which this goes from k minus 1 by 2 plus 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 new to the power minus k minus 1 by 2 and this one when you multiply it out uh, it has every weight from 2k minus 1 by 2 so new to the power 2k minus 1 by 2 so this one can think of as the uh, infinitesimal character of the trivial representation so if one was uh, uh, looking at uh, at uh, coefficient system which is the trivial one then the rho is this one going from minus n minus 1 by 2 to plus n minus 1 by 2 and uh, 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 so this one says that uh, dk tensored with this sim i is one of the representations which appears in this space, which will have a single block. So uh, I want to uh, interpret the space theorem in a few other ways, uh, but before I do that, uh, I should say that uh, space paper is written for trivial coefficient system and I have not managed to find a reference for non-trivial coefficient system. Uh, but uh, this seems good. Uh, so uh, I suppose uh, one is saying that uh, the cohomological representations uh, are one in which uh, that uh, trivial, uh, the one dimensional representation of WR appears in the trivial way and the corresponding piece of SL2C is as large as it could be and uh, the two dimensional representations are free to, uh, to, uh, to be used uh, as long as they make up the infinitesimal character. So a uh, uh, few uh, uh, other ways to look at SPE. So uh, one is that uh, you know if somehow it would be simplest if uh, you know, one could say that uh, 
स्पेज यू टेक ए ए पैरामीटर हुज इन्फेंटेसिमल कैरेक्टर इज द कैरेक्टर ऑफ द ट्रिवियल रिप्रेजेंटेशन और वन ऑफ फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल एंड नो अदर कंडीशन देन दिस इज ऑल दैट वन इज लुकिंग एट एंड इंडीड दैट इज ऑलमोस्ट ट्रू एक्सेप्ट फॉर द फैक्ट दैट इन दिस रिप्रेजेंटेशन विच इन्वॉल्व वन डायमेंशनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ डब्ल्यू आर you may have the sign character so uh, space theorem is almost equivalent to say that infinitesimal character plus the fact that it's an a parameter is all that that is there that is much simpler so uh, space almost says almost says that uh, any a parameter any a parameter with correct infinitesimal character correct infinitesimal character is cohomological i mean just to uh, elaborate on this a little bit you know uh, what are the problems i mean you know it could be sim k plus sim l but sim k plus sim l is not the correct uh, infinitesimal character because sim k and sim l if k and l have the same parity will have things in common whereas uh, infinitesimal character let's say of the trivial representation is regular everything appears with multiplicity 1 so there is no scope for this uh, uh, this piece b to be not irreducible so in some sense you are just the infinitesimal character forces you to be either this kind or it's by sign and sign is not good for trivial character for uh, trivial local system so uh, this would have been uh, simplest and the other remark is that uh, uh, if you think about uh, two dimensional parameters and i have done one small calculation of that uh, two dimensional times sim of certain thing you realize that uh, the cohomological representation of uh, gl and r can be Uh, given in bijective correspondence with self conjugate parabolics of gl and r part b cohomological representations homological representations of gl and r r in bijective correspondence with uh, self conjugate parabolics in gl and r so uh, just to recall what is the notion of a self conjugate parabolic a parabolic in gl and r uh, looks like uh, this uh, gl n1 gl n2 and so on gl n k so uh, the levy looks like uh, gl n1 cross cross gl n k and it is said to be uh, p so p h set to be self conjugate self conjugate if and only if either uh, one or two one is that p is conjugate to p minus is conjugate to p minus which is if and only if uh, this sequence uh, n1 up to nk is uh, uh, backwards the same so uh, 
very simple and uh, uh, yeah, somehow there is a certain simplicity to the results and uh, mm, All right, so this is what SPA is doing. I mean, um, uh, one another aspect to uh, keep in mind from SPA or just from the point of view of infinitesimal character, which is what I am trying to say that somehow the infinitesimal character seems to capture most of the information, I would say all. Uh, except for this small bit about, uh, I have to worry about sign character on B. Uh, is that uh, the, the, the representation psi is sum of irreducible representation appearing with multiplicity one? Yeah. So uh, uh, not only with multiplicity one, but uh, Somehow uh, the one dimensional piece is irreducible and uh, uh, the two dimensional piece also have uh, a certain structure. So, uh, so let me just say that uh, functoriality of homological representations. So uh, we want to uh, use this theorem to uh, say that uh, it looks pretty hopeless if you look at uh, GLM C cross, uh, let's say GLN C inside uh, GLM and C as the tensor product or direct sum or something, then uh, uh, cohomological parameters for GLM and GLN we understand well. And uh, when you multiply them, you will not get anything which looks like a parameter. Because among other things, if there was something one dimensional, then it is some sim power, there is another sim power, and then you have a lot of things there. So somehow uh, this, uh, this is just not good. But then as I said, uh, so not good. So uh, in some sense, um, the aim of my lecture is to uh, uh, suggest a situation in which it looks good. And uh, I was hoping to have proved it, but I have not. Uh, so, uh, so this is the theorem. So this is theorem in quotation mark because it had not been proven. So uh, suppose uh, uh, LG1 to LG2 phi has the property, property that uh, a regular unipotent in G1 goes to a regular unipotent in G2, regular unipotent in G1, check goes to a regular unipotent in G2. Then uh, cohomological representations we have fun to it. Representations have fun to it. So, uh, in fact, there is a stronger form of functoriality which they have, which is uh, not only that uh, under this transfer, homological parameters go to homological parameters, but the converse is also true. If you have a param uh, if you have an A parameter here whose image is homological, then it was to begin with homological. If image of a parameter, a parameter is cohomological here, then it was cohomological to begin with. So uh, before I uh, uh, go on with uh, this, let me just say that uh, this condition about regular unipotent, of course, is uh, is uh, 
for some it may be a very restricted condition but uh, it is a condition which uh, is uh, frequent enough to be uh, of interest and uh, uh, so let me just say examples uh, of uh, situations which uh, the theorem is trying to describe sorry no no for the i i hope not projection mapping is perhaps projection mapping yeah so homological parameter will go to homological parameter which means that if you have tensor product of representations then if it is homological then each com converse would be true because you know one is saying that if a parameter goes to something yeah all right yeah yeah so there is some issue there all right so examples that uh, uh, i have in mind are the usual examples uh, which are very popular in the subject uh, sp2 and c contained inside gl2 and c uh, so 2n plus 1 c contained inside uh, gl 2n plus 1 c uh, there is exercise in burbaki which lists this and uh, anyway this is a very popular and well known subject mm, so 2n minus 1 goes to so 2n uh, f4 goes inside uh, e6 so of course many of them them are related to uh, dinkin diagram and automorphisms thereof g2 is contained in so 7 Contained in SO8, and uh, this one is contained in GL. So there are many nice examples where this theorem uh, under quotation mark applies, uh, but uh, maybe more than the theorem, uh, the consequence of the theorem is what really impresses me. so uh, uh, corresponding to case 1 and 2 we have so 2n plus 1 and sp 2n so theorem uh, the description of uh, homological a parameters logical a parameters for uh, g is equal to so 2n plus 1 r uh, meaning uh, so p q where this is uh, sum is that and uh, sp 2n r is uh, the same as g l no difference because uh, parameters for uh, these classical groups are sub parameters for gln if you is uh, saying that if you lift a parameter then it should remain homological and conversely if it comes from classical group it should be homological so therefore uh, uh, homological a parameters of this is this and uh, it's not quite the case for so2n but for so2n uh, one can get a good mileage out of so2n minus 1 uh, not true not true for so2n uh, but uh, a good class of uh, homological representations can be obtained true 
So not all cohomological representations are transferred from SO2 n minus 1. Uh, there is a certain uh, symmetry which is required. So uh, this seems good. All right. So I think I have 10 minutes. I want to make some comments about uh, uh, what uh, the literature says about the proofs. So as I said, I don't have a proof, but uh, uh, anyway, <clears throat> so uh, somehow one has to translate uh, all the works about cohomological representations of real group in terms of the language of parameters. And as I said, uh, this has been done by many people. And uh, eventually, we want to, uh, uh, to be able to uh, write down all these uh, cohomological parameters. We want to describe cohomological parameters. And in some sense, uh, uh, what one wants to say is that cohomological parameters are some very obvious things. So I think it would be good if the literature said so, that uh, these are the cohomological parameters, how one relates to Vogan Jukarman or to whoever else is another matter, but to just abstract it out about uh, what is a cohomological parameter. So uh, typically what the subject does, is that uh, it begins in the following way. You have C star contained inside WR, and uh, this C star under uh, this parameter will go inside a certain torus. And uh, you look at its centralizer. Centralizer of any connected abelian group is a Levy subgroup. So you have gotten hold of a canonical Levy subgroup associated to any parameter. So uh, you write M as a centralizer of C star in G hat. And uh, it, it is a little better because C star being one dimensional, you can look at the positive eigenspace and negative eigenspace and therefore uh, this M comes equipped with a parabolic P plus and a parabolic P minus. So P plus consists of the positive eigenspace of C star, and P minus is the negative eigenspaces. And if you look at that element J, which normalizes C star, it takes P to P minus. So this is the notion of a self-associate parabolic which normalizes a m and takes p plus to p minus. So this is phi. So phi of j normalizes m, normalizes m, uh, taking p, p plus to p minus, p plus to p minus. Thus, these are self-associate parabolic. Thus, these are self-associate parabolics. And uh, the parameter C star has uh, gone into M because C star centralizes C star, but it goes to the center of M. And uh, somehow the last bit one needs to do is to think about where to send SL2C, but SL2C is anyway centralizing C star and it's also centralizing WR, so it certainly is going to M. What more natural than send it to as large part of M as possible? So in some sense, that is what roughly the story is. But I think uh, the story is not so clearly spelled out for some details. So somehow, uh, I mean, uh, 
you know, this Vj normalizes M and there are some choices involved. Whether those choices are unique up to something or the other is not clear. And whether any self-associate parabolic allows this information in a unique way. So the character of C star which lands inside the center of M, which is a certain torus, that is dictated by the infinitesimal character. So that's totally canonical. So in some sense, the only ambiguity in this picture is about this element phi of j. And uh, this is the crux of all the problems in all the write-up. People are not too clear about what the phi j is. So I think it is at this point that often the literature assumes that uh, g is either a semi-simple group or g is a group which has a discrete series. So uh, under one of these two conditions, uh, uh, this element phi j simplifies a little bit and uh, people write down a formula on phi j which uh, I think uh, in various parts of mathematics it is very well known kind of a object. Phi j is related to omega g times omega m. That is a famous element uh, studied in uh, langland shahidi method and so on. Omega g times omega m is that crucial element, but how canonic, so anyway, somehow that uh, is confused, but in my mind, uh, there is a little bit more which I, I feel one should have, which is that uh, one should eventually choose phi j so that uh, it can fix a pinning on m. So uh, this nobody has said clearly, but uh, in the examples that I have on those, it seems possible to fix a pinning, and then things seem canonical. So, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, let me say that eventually, eventually it appears, eventually it appears, uh, it appears that uh, cohomological representations, cohomological representations are no, the representations is not the word, cohomological parameters are in bijective correspondence with self-associate parameters. And uh, uh, the parameter phi is uh, so constructed that uh, phi j preserves a pinning on preserves a pinning in centralizer. and then it is unique. So, yeah, this is uh, roughly what I had to say. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's all that I need to say. Thank you. Ah, right, right, regular, you know, I think the observation is that once regular unipotent go to regular unipotent, it gives a, a perfect correspondence from going from Levy subgroups to Levy subgroups, from parabolics to parabolic, from Borel to Borel, 
and uh, this correspondence has the property that levies to levies, that correspondence also preserves regular unipotent. And in some sense, the mm, another related observation is that trivial representation corresponds to regular unipotent. So I think uh, you see that happening in those cases that uh, uh, for the levy to levy, the property is preserved. That reg uh, regular unipotent go to regular unipotent. And uh, there is a natural mapping from Borel to Borel because to a regular unipotent element, there is a unique Borel which contains that regular unipotent. So once a regular unipotent go to regular unipotent, it gives rise to a natural mapping from the set of Borels to Borel. And for uh, Levy, Levy is a centralizers of some tori. And you look at the image tori and you look at its centralizer. And once again, it's a natural mapping. And then it gives you a natural mapping from parabolics. But anyway, I think uh, once, uh, so in some sense, uh, if uh, one knew explicitly what are cohomological parameters, which is what uh, everyone else uh, has been doing, what one is doing is just a small observation. But uh, somehow the literature is not cleanly written that uh, I can say that, okay, this is obvious.